perilous journey, the destination, a better life. A memorial service for the wrong remains, bringing respect to a situation with so little of it. An underground community using a newly legal psychedelic to heal. These are just a few of the places our Nine News Originals team took you in 2023. The concept behind Originals is simple. We want to tell stories and bring you information that's original. Original reporting, original information. These are the stories that sometimes take months to put together. Stories we feel will help all of us better understand our city, our state, and our nation. Like this one, about an unprecedented number of migrants coming into Colorado, mostly from Venezuela. Here are my colleagues, Angeline McCall and Chris Hansen. Yo me vine de mi país en busca de una mejor calidad de vida y poder ayudar a mi familia. In the midst of so much uncertainty, routine provides a constant outside El Paso's Sacred Heart Church. Every morning, an overnight stay in the church transforms into a day spent here. En verdad, te, te, estamos en, en incertidumbre. Pues. This is Roberto's 25th morning on the sidewalk. Huh? He and his family feel stuck. Esa carita cosita. Reliving the same day until they're able to move on. Porque no podemos, no, no sabemos cómo, cómo, cómo actuar. Tenemos el miedo. It's a journey. Now 3,000 miles in the making, most of it on foot from Venezuela to here. After so long on the move, the days here feel frustratingly slow for Roberto, Jefferson, Maria, and Jesus. Doloroso porque en pues nunca habíamos enfrentado esto como salir de nuestro país. En realidad, toda la gente que está acá no se quiere quedar aquí en el paso. Tienen diferentes diferentes destinos. What they need are the necessities. But what they want is to be someplace else. Tengo familias acá y desde muy pequeño tuve ese sueño, esa esperanza de estar acá y decidí tatuármelo. Y bueno, esperando a que eso se haga realidad como tal. To make it to the border, they trekked through a jungle, avoided gangs, and evaded cartels. No es fácil. For most, no es fácil. the dream came to them recently, out of survival. Nosotros queremos un futuro, por lo menos que los niños puedan estudiar. Es lo que a mí más me llena de que ellos estudien, que puedan ser profesionales algún día, porque en Venezuela es difícil. Maria decided this journey wasn't for her. It's for her kids. Toca tener fuerza hasta, o sea, sacar fuerzas de donde no hay por los hijos. Porque si yo no tengo fuerzas, mis hijos tampoco. Ellos dependen de mí. The thousands of migrants who made it to Denver did it the same way through El Paso, carefully to the next stop. Angustiados, ya como cansados, no sabemos qué hacer, no tenemos una respuesta. No tenemos solución a nuestros problemas. One small mistake could mean losing the progress they've worked for. El tema es salir aquí al paso. If they're taken by border patrol, they'll be back in Mexico in five hours. Pues me siento un poco bien. Eh, eh, sí, como eh, nerviosos, como todo, porque tú sabes que la, la situación de uno estamos aquí esperando muchos días. Ponerlos en peligro de este lado, no, porque... Si decidimos venir hasta acá es porque nos sentimos resguardados acá en este país. En el paso, uf. For these families, El Paso is not safe. Sí, mi familia. Mario and his family distance themselves from the border. Como puede ver todo lo que hemos pasado, logramos pasar aquí. Gracias a Dios. Awaiting their next move, stuck between El Paso and the next immigration checkpoint. Para seguir adelante, que no sé, pero es que me da miedo que nos frenen y no agarre migración y me devuelvan otra vez con mi familia, tanto que hemos luchado y no quiero eso. Buenas noches, bienvenidos a Colorado. Buenas noches, bienvenidos a Colorado. Buenas noches, bienvenidos a Colorado. Buenas noches, bienvenidos a Color
All of them are waiting for the safest moment to keep moving forward. They'll pack up the few things they have for another night in a church turned shelter. Another night going nowhere. If they could, they would break this cycle. One day they know the routine will end in a new city they hope comes with a sense of freedom no. they can't find here. Since we met these four families, most made it into Denver and moved on. Roberto and Jefferson's journey took them across another border. They're now in Canada. Jesus went back to Mexico, hoping to come to the U.S. through a new program. He planned to head to California next. Only Maria stayed in Denver, staying first in a shelter. Now, a new home. In the dead of night, a woman needs help. Here's her ID, Jerica. Jerica. Jerica LaCour sits in a parking lot. Is she by herself? Alone, confused, and despondent. Medical's coming, they're right up here. Minutes pass, her mental state worsens. A medic assumes he knows what's happening. Guess who gets ketamine? Yeah, oh, seriously. No. That flippant observation is the direct result of an assumption. Jerica, according to this report, is suffering from something known as excited delirium. Five years later, Jerica's husband still can't tell you what that means. No. You know what it is? No, I have no idea. He's hardly alone. Few people can agree on what it actually is. No major medical organization recognizes it. And yet suspicion of excited delirium prompted a medic to give Jerica LaCour a sedative that this autopsy says contributed to the death of the mother of five. And I have to look at them every day, every day, and I could see the different pains in their face, like, Dad, what do we do? We don't have a mom. So, Daddy got you. Hey, stop right there. Stop. Stop. A year after the death of LaCour, stop. a similar story played out in Aurora with Elijah McLean. Now let go of me. Suspected excited delirium, injection of ketamine. Is it hard to watch that video? Yeah. It, it was hard. Dr. Jamira Jones, board certified in emergency medicine, oh, was it trying to do that? watched this and decided she needed to do something. It could have been avoided and he could still be here. That's what sits with me most. And so she volunteered to help the state's health department better understand that term, excited delirium, a term our investigation has now linked to at least 150 deaths in the U.S. since 2010. What did you know about excited delirium before all this? Honestly, not much. Excited delirium, a condition marked by excessive agitation and occasional sudden death. This Colorado report, which Dr. Jones helped craft, determined it also lacks a uniform definition, underlying scientific evidence, and a clear understanding of its causes. Dr. Jones now calls it nonsense. It's amazing how that word continues on when there's no objective evidence behind it. And so in late 2021, her team notified the Colorado Department of Public Health and the state of Colorado to stop using ketamine on suspected cases and to reject the term outright. Is it time to retire the use of excited delirium? I would, I would strongly agree with that statement, yeah. It's just junk. It's junk science, and we shouldn't be relying on that. State Representative Judy Amabile thought all was well until we told her something she wasn't expecting, something that caused her to say this. I think bullshit. 
<laughs> but I wasn't paying attention to that up until now. Two years after a state report rejected the term, we found every person wanting to become a law enforcement officer in Colorado must still undergo training on excited delirium. They should get that out of the curriculum and they should do that sooner than later. Colorado's Peace Officer Standards and Training Board, or POST, mandates every officer must be trained on something representative of Mobile calls bullshit. The training for excited delirium is about restraining them. And a lot of times restraining somebody is the exact opposite of what you should be doing if you're trying to diffuse the situation, if you're trying to calm things down. The restraint is what it seems like leads to death. She's now calling on the state attorney general to change this. Are you asking them to do that? I am asking them to do that. Our investigation found law enforcement agencies all over the Front Range continue to train on excited delirium. Well, County inexplicably called it the freight train of death. 29 agencies responded to our records request. Only three told us their policy manuals don't include the words excited delirium. But I think when you have institutionalized uh, a term like excited delirium, it's hard to take that out of our vernacular and move in a different direction. Wheat Ridge Police Chief Chris Murtha thinks it's time to finally move in that different direction. Uh, I certainly wouldn't lose any sleep if that, that term was disappeared from, from our vernacular. He tells his officers never to conclude what they're witnessing is excited delirium, saying it can mirror other problems they might miss or cause them to make mistakes. To train on something that's not settled in my mind is difficult. a funeral to me for these people. Saying goodbye is sacred. You know, it's a, it's a very solemn event. What brings this group together is not. So it's good to let them go. Oh, I feel like I can get hold of it. Even just hours before, you know, it's heavier. Judy Kressler still held on. Let me just figure out. Oh, you just lift it. The funeral home that gave Judy these ashes told her they were her father. This is the cremains, the mixed cremains of, of different people. We don't know who they are. They're not my father. Her father, Harold Kressler. The FBI told her the funeral home, Sunset Mesa, sold his body. And that just shows my dad. He was always happy and laughing and... He was jovial. <laughs> Just like they sold hundreds of others as part of the lucrative trade of human remains. What the FBI told me was that his body was uh, sold to a global anatomy project in Saudi Arabia as a whole body. The funeral homeowners are now in prison, leaving victims' bags filled with a haphazard mix of unidentified remains. Because it's just, it just, it goes against nature. It, goes against what's right. Judy wants to bring these ashes the dignity her dad never got. We're going to Delta, Colorado to scatter the ashes of these mystery people that we all have that we don't know who they are. It's the right thing to do. It's a respectful thing to do. She's not alone. Unbelievable. Other this victims of the Sunset Mesa Funeral yeah. Home have the wrong remains, too. It's still surreal. The ones Debbie Schultz brought still surreal. are still sealed in evidence bags. I must be making this up. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. But here are the rest of you. We were going to have a disco party once they were arrested. Dark humor gives pockets of light to this horror. This really happened mm -hmm. because doesn't it seem like that yeah. sometimes? Like you wake up in the morning like, did that really happen? But I must <laughs> be exaggerating this yeah. or something. This can't be. These are the only people um, who get it. The only people who understand yeah, the unimaginable. Thing. My dad was turned into a plastic uh, yeah. display. Basically, oh, yeah. they're not just ashes, they're people, real people that had lives and hopes and dreams and memories and love and were loved and 
I just think they deserve better than what they got. The evil won't go away. But today, respect still has a chance. They deserve peace too, and I think that the river is about the most peaceful place that I can think of. Debbie and Judy won't ever get to say goodbye to their loved ones the way they wanted. Why Harold, not Harold? Yeah, not Harold. But together, they honor people they'll never know. The people that are in these ashes, I hope some measure of peace is finally coming for them. I just feel like I, I did right by these people. They don't belong in that box. They belong here with nature. And that's where they are forever. of microdosing is that it's supposed to be completely subperceptual, that you are not high. You might feel a bit more relaxed, a bit happier, a bit more focused and in your body, but you don't notice any psychedelic effects. Be respectful, you know, and recognize that this is a very powerful gift. Sort of like a mushroom itself, the underground world of psilocybin therapy is coming to the surface after Colorado voters made it legal. My name is Tracy T, and I am the founder and steward of Moms on Mushrooms. Veronica Lightning Horse Perez. I am a wife, mother of five, and I am a specialized therapist. I am Ashley Ryan Troxel. I'm a sex and psychedelics coach. Three women invited us into their private spaces to show us how and why they microdose magic mushrooms nearly every day, a discreet practice they've been doing for years. And then I always just say a little prayer. And then I'll set my intention and ask for my intention. So I've weighed out my mushroom cap and I'm just gonna pop that in my mouth. A subtle effect, they say, has replaced their daily dependency on man-made pharmaceuticals. My anxiety and depression are manageable, and so psilocybin has given me my life back. I had done a tremendous amount of work on complex PTSD that had put me in the hospital. I was barely functioning for a while. And yes, at times they take much more for a full psychedelic trip with a guide or therapist. The journey itself allowed me to have a different perspective and a different type of healing on the childhood sexual trauma I had experienced in a completely different way. In that space, there is opportunity to alchemize grief, to release patterns that have been holding you down forever. What they're doing at home will eventually be allowed in state-regulated places called healing centers, places where people can buy and use magic mushrooms with a licensed guide. That won't happen until late 2024 when rules and licenses are approved. I want to continue to see really high quality science in the field before we start making this widely available. Dr. Stacy Fisher, a professor of medicine at CU, is just starting a major study on mushroom therapy for late stage cancer patients. As a supporter of medically controlled psychedelic experiences, she's skeptical and cautious about Colorado's new path with mushrooms. Did the state move too fast with decriminalization here? Well, I would say that I, I think in general, jailing people for having psilocybin is not something I would support. However, allowing widespread use under the Natural Medicines Act does give me concern, and I think we can expect to see increased adverse events. Who should not participate in this type of therapy? People that have schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, a family history of schizophrenia or bipolar disorders and a first degree relative should avoid this. As you hear about this, it may seem reminiscent to the early days of legal cannabis in Colorado. People who believe a naturally made substance can bring a sense of harmony as state and federal law remain in conflict. And so it's not an overnight fix. And also recognizing it's not a panacea and it's not gonna fix you. You fix you, 
the medicine helps. From people who've been working with this medicine for decades underground, let's let them come up and teach and let's get a really sacred and intentional respect for this medicine far beyond just viewing it as another pill to take. It's not easy to capture a year's worth of in-depth work uncovering untold stories in just 30 minutes. On 9news.com slash originals, you can find more of our stories driving change here in Colorado. Like down in the San Luis Valley, we've met Coloradans uncovering their families' hidden histories of slavery. A team of historians is compiling the stories of indigenous slaves whose names were intentionally forgotten over generations. Experts told us our phones are better at tracking pizza deliveries than receiving emergency alerts. Now federal regulators are making changes to our nation's wireless emergency alert system, citing nine news originals reporting about the problems that complicate reaching you with life-saving information. Thanks for watching. It really does take a team of reporters, photographers, producers, and managers to put this project together over the course of a year. I want to thank them as well.